Thank you, Lord. Man, oh man, I feel the presence of the Lord here this morning. Praise God. We're going to let our young people be dismissed. <clears throat> Got a good group of young people. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I guess our visitor slipped out, didn't they? Did they slip out? They did? Okay. Praise God. Well, we were glad they were here. <laughs> Angela, you look mighty spiffy this morning. Amen. Praise God. Good to have our nurse with us in service. Amen. With all of our us older ones, I'm talking about me, you never know when you might need one. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, dear Lord. Well, God is so very good. He's kind to let us feel his presence, isn't he? If I'm not mistaken, I didn't hear John mention this, but I don't always catch everything. But Brother Hillhouse is going to be with us. That's still on, isn't it? Yeah, he's going to be. Did John say that earlier? Brother Hillhouse is going to be with us this evening. Brother and Sister Hillhouse. Amen. He's going to minister to us. And uh, praise God. It's good to have some fresh preaching. Amen. Praise God. It's amazing how, you know, just having a different person minister. Amen. How refreshing it is. It is to me. I need to be preached to. You need to be preached to? Praise God. We're missing Joe this morning, Joe Tabor. Y'all pray for Brother Tabor. Amen. He's stove up a little bit, and uh, he needs your prayers. Praise God. Lift him up to the Lord. I'm glad Sister Cooper is feeling better. Man, she kept us on our knees for a few days, didn't she? Praise God. That's good for us to be on our knees. Amen. We just uh, are, we're thankful that the Lord has ministered to her, helped her through this time. Praise God. We're missing Sister Salinas. Amen. Praise God. Pray for her. I guess I better stop. I'll leave somebody off. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Well, God is good. And Sister Ratliff's not here, is she? Well, she, somebody bought her a plane ticket to go see our son, Michael. And so she's gone until the 12th. And uh, she's in North Carolina. Today is Michael's birthday. He's 40 years old. Just looking at me, you can't tell I got a kid that old, can you? <laughs> 40 years old. Man, oh man. Huh? You're almost 40. Praise God. I remember turning 40. It didn't seem like it was that long ago. <laughs> I worked as a housing inspector. And I came in the back door, got the shock of my life. I was an inspector and I went out all over. I covered seven counties for HUD. And I'd go and inspect houses and stuff, but there was a bunch of ladies in the office. My boss was a lady. And the secretarial work was done. There was just another man or two in there. Beware if you ever work with a bunch of ladies because they thought I needed a baby shower. You know, two times. And that's embarrassing, folks. That's embarrassing. To come in the back door and a bunch of ladies are giving a man a baby, a baby shower. That's for Rebecca and Ruby. Both of those times. Baby showers. So I'll tell you how long ago that was. Ruby's 25 now. She's 24, 25. 25. But one time I came in and I was 40 
and they gave me, I, the, the break room was filled with black balloons. <laughs> they told me that means I'm over the hill. So I guess one of my kids made it over the hill, second one, to make it over the hill. That means that must mean I'm way down the other side. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But pray for my wife that she'll have an enjoyable time. We don't get to see Michael very often, and that means a lot because we've got two grandbabies out there as well. And Tabitha, I know she's having a, a good time. Praise God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Isn't God good? And everybody got to meet Josie, didn't you? Man, I love that little baby. I had the, you know, the Lord, we just got these talking about waiting on the Lord. I had to wait for a week before I could get in her face because I had the crud. I had to stay away from her a little bit. Rebecca didn't make me, but I didn't want that baby getting sick. But uh, man, I tell you, those grandbabies are special. They are so special. Amen. Praise God. You can imagine you know, the little kids and stuff. This church has got quite a few wonderful little kids. Amen. Up to teenager age and thereabouts. But you can understand why, or at least I can, you know, why Jesus loved children so much. You know? They don't, they don't hold grudges or any of that kind of stuff. You know, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, right? Didn't he say that? And really and truly, I mean, he said, Except you become as a little child, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. They do get mad at one another sometimes, but it's gone. It's gone in just no time. Just They don't harbor things. You know, they get upset and then they... And just naturally, the wrath doesn't go down upon their anger. I mean, the sun doesn't go down upon their wrath, rather. You know, they just instinctively, they don't hold grudges, it doesn't seem like. I don't know of any kids that do. But boy, grown-ups do. Grown-ups do it. Amen. Praise God. And they believe. They simply believe. Praise God. In fact, you gotta they believe just nearly anything, you know. And that sometimes that's good, and sometimes that's not so good. You know, we teach them not to believe strangers coming up, and you know, you got a reason to teach them that, you know. But at the same time, at the same time, they're very much Bible believers, easily convinced, and that's what Jesus loves. Amen. He wants us to be like it as grown people. We're more skeptical than children are. We are. I guess you get up and you, you know, you get a lot of people let you down in life and, and you kind of, you get kind of spooked, you know, on just believing just anybody. Isn't that right? Amen. Somehow or another we got to, when it comes to Jesus, we've got to get past that and have full faith and full confidence in him. Amen. In fact, that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. We're going to turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. <clears throat> we're going to begin with verse number 20. Now, I'm going to be looking at... I intend on looking at... I better rephrase that. Uh, three of the Gospels because this story, this event is in three of the four Gospels. I don't remember it being in John. It, you, I stand to be corrected maybe, but I don't think it's in John. But it's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Amen. But I chose this morning to use Matthew because it's the shortest one. And I was trying to be considerate of you standing. Amen. We're going to look at all three of them, some, as we talk about what we're going to talk about this morning. <clears throat> Praise
Praise God. And it says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good cheer, good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Praise God. We know this story. We refer to this story often. I don't have anything new to say about it other than to refresh your memory. Amen. And I believe when God lays something upon somebody's heart to preach, I believe it's timely. You know, it's timely. Though you've heard it a thousand times, when God gives it, it's timely for a purpose and for a reason. To, to, for you to respond to, amen, because God has intentions of what he wants to fulfill. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, would you, God, touch us today by your word. We ask you today, oh God, every life that is in this place, would you minister to their hearts? Praise God. Let us be recipients today, Lord, of everything that you furnish for us at Calvary, everything that you purchase for us. We know that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means that in this place today, you haven't changed from what we read in your word. Oh, God, and your word gives us, Lord, oh, God, patterns and examples so that we can know how you are. And, God, that knowing you're the same, that you will do the great things that you've done in your word if we will only believe. I pray you'll touch us today. I ask for grace to teach and minister to your people whatever it is you desire not only in this place but God throughout Lord Jesus every place where men are gathered together in your name and the truth God as they minister your word let the souls the, the saints the visitors be ministered to and touched today by the word of the Lord by the spirit of the Lord in Jesus name amen everybody say in Jesus name <clears throat> you can be seated Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We're going to turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Praise God. Everything with the Lord hinges on faith. Every door in this building, amen, opens by a hinge on the door. By turning, you turn the knob, and, but it hinges. It stays in place. It opens and it shuts because those hinges stay in place and carry the door. Amen. Faith is where everything from the Lord comes from. It all hinges on faith. Amen. So it would be behoove us to look at faith and uh, look at it. This is a very uh, familiar uh, scripture. <clears throat> Others could be looked at as well, but this is the one I felt that the Lord you know, brought to my attention to address. Hebrews 11 and verse number 1. This is the first scripture in uh, what is called the chapter of the heroes of faith by people. Amen. It's not the beginning of talking about faith in the book of Hebrews because it's full of, of talking about faith. In fact, this is a continuation of the previous verses actually. Amen. The previous verses in chapter 10 tell us that, that we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but that we believe unto the saving of the soul. Yeah. Amen. We need to keep the, our confidence steadfast to the end. Confidence is faith, isn't it? Huh? It's faith. Our faith steadfast to the end. And that's where, though, again, I mentioned it again in the original writings. There were not chapters and verses, so this was the next verse, the next scripture. Amen. And it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And when I first read this scripture, it wasn't clear 
to me what this was saying. Amen. And I've heard people reference it saying now faith. That means faith right now. But that's really not uh, the true definition of what that word means. I've heard people say that. They didn't dig into it evidently. Not to be criticized. But uh, praise God. <clears throat> because everything of faith is not now. It doesn't happen immediately. Some things do. Amen. But uh, faith, or you could put even so faith instead of now faith. Even so faith, that's what it actually means. If you look the word up. Even so, or now faith, is the substance, the word substance right there. It actually means assurance. That's what it means. Amen. If you have assurance about something, if you have assurance about something, you know, you have confidence in it. So faith is the substance or the assurance of things hoped for. In other words, you've got assurance of something you're hoping for. Something of hope is something in the future. All right? Something in the future. Whether it's just a minute away or a thousand years away, it's something in the future. Amen? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Praise God. I'm planning on going to heaven. Amen. And I have faith that it's real. I believe that it's real. I know it's ahead of me. Amen. And by faith, have, I have assurance in me that if I will believe the Lord and live for him, I will obtain that. Amen. Amen. I have assurance of things hoped for. Then it says this, the evidence of things not seen. So it's things that's not seen. Things in the future are not seen, right? It's not just things in the future as pertaining to this, but it's things that you don't see. Amen. You don't see it presently, right? You can't see I'm talking about with your eyes. Amen. You can't see it. It may not be tangible and touchable at the present moment. Amen. But the Bible says, Faith is the evidence of things not seen. And that word evidence, amen, and looking in the language, what it says, it says it means conviction. Conviction. Praise God. Everybody say conviction. Amen. Conviction. So I looked up the word conviction. Praise God. And Though you may not think that all of these definitions I read apply to the scripture that we're using, but the principle is all I want to pick out of it uh, and uh, because it, it, it helps us to get maybe a, uh, my hope is, is that it'll help us get a deeper meaning of what we're you know, trying to explain. The word conviction means a fixed our firm belief, a fixed or firm belief. As here's an example, no, no clever argument, uh, no persuasive fact or theory could make a different uh, could make a difference in his conviction in the righteousness of his position. In other words, nobody can talk you out of it when you have convictions about something. I remember Brother Stroud used to tell us, you know, I've said this before, but <clears throat> Brother Stroud used to say uh, that preference uh, under certain circumstances, uh, you will let go of something if it's a preference to you, you know. But whenever you have things that you are convicted about, you will die for those things. They are unmovable. People cannot persuade you away from them. You know, you cannot be moved. Pressure from out, outward sources cannot cause you to deviate when you have convictions. Amen. A preference, you'll throw in the towel. Let time go by. A reason why a lot of people... Uh, are not hanging on to a lot of things in Pentecost, which was once preached, is because they had a preference and not a conviction. Amen. Whenever the fads change, they'll, they'll change. 
because they had preferences, not true convictions. And when you have true convictions, everybody else may change, but you will stick to them. When you actually have convictions, amen, our country needs some convictions. Amen. I said our world needs some convictions, godly convictions. Praise God. I want this church to have convictions, not my preferences. Amen. I don't want to preach my preferences. Amen. We want to preach the Word of God and get the Word of God, what it convicts us of through its truth and be convicted to the point that we don't move from those things whenever times change because times do change. People change with times. Amen. But whenever you have convictions, you don't move off of those things. Amen. Praise God. So it's a fixed and a firm belief, a conviction is. Now this is the one that you, know, you may not think as pertaining to our scripture uh, about faith being the evidence of things not seen, but nonetheless, there's an ideal here to it. Uh, I think that, you know, gives you a little insight of what the word, the meaning. The second one is the act of convicting someone. This is like in a court of law. The act of convicting someone as in a court of law, a declaration that a person is guilty of an offense. That's a, when somebody gets uh, convicted. Now, the thing I wanted to bring out about this, in the United States, at least, you know, they had to be convicted, they had to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt, right? Isn't that the truth? It's just supposed to be... That don't, that's not always the case, but it's supposed to work like that. Amen. To be proven, they have a jury. And for somebody uh, to get a life sentence, perhaps, if, my, if I'm not mistaken, it has to, doesn't have to be complete. Every juror has to say that they... They, that person is convicted beyond a reasonable doubt. In other words, this is what I want to bring out, the jurors must be themselves convicted. They must be, it must be proven in their hearts that that person is guilty. Where they wouldn't move off of that. If they have a question in their mind, they're not convicted about it. Right? Right? Praise God. So the ideal is, is that faith is a conviction. It is, it is something that you won't move from. And the proof that you have is the Word of God. You are so convinced that this is the truth and this is right and this is what it will be how it will be, that you are unmovable from this right here. You have convictions. Amen. That's what faith is. It's having that in you. Having, it's not having hope in you. It's being convicted about it. Faith is the evidence or it's the conviction of things not seen. It's the conviction of things not seen. I mean, you don't see it at the present, but it is going to be. It is so. That's what's going to happen. God will bring it to pass. Nobody can talk me out of it. Nobody can move me away from it. Whenever you have that in you, you have faith. A lot of people have hope. A lot of people have hope. But God honors faith. Hope is good. I'm not criticizing hope. A lot of times when we pray about things, we have hope that God will do it. That's not bad. And sometimes he just does it. <laughs> but really, 
What causes the hand of God to move is faith. Praise God. And either it's in you or it's not. Amen. Praise God. It is the state of being convicted. Amen. It is the act of convincing a person by argument or evidence. Convincing a person. God wants to convince us. Amen. He wants to convince us. He wants people to be convinced to the point they have faith in their hearts. Convicted about it. Amen. How many people, I'm not blasting nobody, but how many people, when they get prayed for, honestly believe that by his stripes you were healed? Come on, really. It's as well as done. When his name is laid on me, it's as well as done. I may see it. I may feel it. I may not see any results, but it is as well as done. His name is on me. I believe his report. I mean, that's faith, friend. I'm, I'm not just talking about, you know, pretending. I'm talking about really having that inside of you. That's got to be inside of a person amen amen they got to be to the point of convicted about it and nobody can you know you just can't play I mean you can't pretend that it's either there or it's not praise God I don't want nobody to feel bad. If all you can go is muster up hope, I hope God does it. Well, just hang on to that. I'm not criticizing you. That's the beginning. Uh, that's the beginning. Amen. But somehow we need to get our faith built. Somehow we need to get our faith strengthened. Amen. Amen. That's, if, for, if nothing else happens here today, amen, but help you to realize you know, I need to start working on that. I need to start working on having faith. The Bible says if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. If we live in wrong, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to have the faith you need to have. You're not. And the whole thing about it is, is this is all about faith. You're going to need God. You're going to need God to move in. You're going to need God to help you. And there's got to be faith there. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. How many of you get prayed for, you don't believe God will do it? How many of you get prayed for, you don't think it's going to happen? You've got to understand, faith has got to be there. Amen. So you, the, the thing is, God is not a respecter of person, folks. He is not a respecter of person. Now, we can, I'll put it up right up front here. You can ask for things that's not the will of God. And you won't get them. You know, everything is in accordance with the will of God. But listen to me, if he took stripes to buy your stripes, your that's, that tells you enough right there. That's the will of God to work in your life and to touch you. He wants you to be saved. Amen. He wants people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes because people have faith. He, Jesus, it don't take a lot. He said, if you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed. And doubt not. That's the thing. Doubt not. It's not something that's hard to attain. Every man's been given the measure of faith. Right? And then as we grow up and we get disappointed in a lot of things by people, we also learn to plant a little doubt in there. Oh, praise God. I'm getting off my notes. Faith is having that in you, conviction of things not seen, evidence of things not seen. Praise God, not hope, the conviction about it. Amen. Romans chapter 4, verse number 21, Abraham had this inside of him. Amen. He lived a life with that inside of him. He wasn't perfect. There were times he tried to figure it out, and there were times he tried to intervene and help God out. Amen. 
But I do believe that he believed God was going to do it. Amen. He was convinced about it. In fact, in Romans 4, 21, it says, and being fully persuaded, not just, in other words, nobody could talk him out of it. He, this was inside of that man. He was totally convinced that God was going to make of him a mighty people and give him a nation and give him the land and all that stuff. When God told him, come out from your country and your kindred unto a land which I will show you, I will make of you a great nation and stuff, he said, okay, I'm leaving everything. It did take a little while to his father, Tara, you know, he was connected to his dad. He said he was told to come out from his country and kindred. After his dad died, he kept he fulfilled what the Lord told him to do, came all the way out. Amen. Praise God. But nobody could turn him around. Nobody could change his mind. Amen. He was fully persuaded. In fact, whenever the Lord told him that Sarah was going to have a child, 25 years had passed before it actually took place. But he was, the Bible says, he was fully persuaded, though in the face of impossibility. Come on, come on. He couldn't have children. His body parts didn't work no more. His wife couldn't have children. Her body parts didn't work no more. They was past the age of being able to uh, have children, amen. And God told him, Sarah's going to have a child. And in the face of impossibility, he was completely, totally, 100% convinced, convinced that God was going to bring it to pass. He was, and therefore, he was fully persuaded, amen. The, the impossibility couldn't talk him, talk him out of believing it. That's what God is looking for inside of somebody's heart in order to do what needs done in their lives, amen. He was fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. He wasn't persuaded that he was able to perform it. He was persuaded that God was able to perform it. Oh, somebody say, praise the, praise the Lord. Hebrews 11 and 13, after listing a bunch of the what we call the heroes of faith, it says, these all died in faith not having received the promises, but this is right here, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. Now, there's a lot of things in that right there. That says they having seen them afar off. Do you think that they literally saw them, the promises? They didn't literally see the promises. They saw, uh, just like Moses saw, the Bible says Moses endured as seeing him who was invisible. Invisible. Now, I don't believe it's referencing whenever he saw him. He didn't see him. Amen. He saw his hinder parts. Remember that? And the Lord put him on a rock. But I don't, the Bible says seeing him who's invisible. It may have been referencing that, you know, but... I believe that the way that the Lord, that Moses saw the Lord was through eyes of faith. Amen. Praise God. And these right here, all those heroes of faith, though they didn't literally see the Lord, they saw him through eyes of faith. Amen. You've got to see what God has promised you, not with your literal eyesight, but you've got to see it. Uh, you've got to see the evidence. You've got to be convicted about it uh, of things that are not seen. Amen. You've got to see them through eyes of faith. Amen. They were they saw him through eyes of faith, and they were per, uh, they were persuaded of them to the point that they embraced them, Amen. And they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth, Amen. They were persuaded. They had the promises told them. They had not received them at the moment. Amen. But they considered themselves strangers and pilgrims expecting to receive them in the future. They were as well as theirs. They had faith in their heart. They were persuaded about it on the inside. Nothing could move them. Amen. They had faith. 
Paul speaks of the Christians in Romans 8, verse number 31 through 39. I'm going to read it quickly. Paul says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I like that one, don't you? Because of what Jesus did. <clears throat> then it says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Amen. Who's going who's to accuse God's people? It is God that justifieth. Amen. Who is he that condemneth? Who's going to go condemn God's people? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. In other words, he's reiterated on what he just got through saying. If God be for us, who can be against us? What can be against us? Who's going to put their finger in our face and accuse us? God's forgiven us. God's justified us. In other words, uh, rendered us innocent. By the blood of Jesus, by Jesus coming, giving his life for us. Amen. Amen. Then it says this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are as counted as sheep for the slaughter. In other words, though we're going through all these things, God's people are. Amen. Nay, in all these things, though we're facing obstacles, right? We're facing difficulties. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. We're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Amen. That's what the Bible says. We're more than conquerors. Amen. Praise God. Through him that loved us. Amen. Because he loves us. Amen. We may go through things, but you got somebody that loves us. Amen. And makes intercessions for him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm not going to fail, but if I fail, I'm going to get back up because I got somebody that loves me and cares about me. Who's going to separate me from his love? If I have the tenacity to get up and walk with him again, praise God. He's got plenty of forgiveness. He's got plenty of mercy. He will help me. Amen. If he's for me, who or what can be against me? Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Then it says this, I am persuaded. There's that persuasion. Amen. That's what was in Paul. That's how he's able to do all of this. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What's, what's, what's he talking about? He's talking about I have faith that he he is for me and I am for him. That I love him and he loves me. Amen. He, I'm going to make it to the end, in other words. I'm convinced, amen, of who I believe in, who I trust in. Praise God. Somebody say praise the Lord. So persuasion, being completely, fully convinced, amen, totally convinced, amen. Praise God. That's what faith is. As Abraham, amen, he was fully persuaded, totally persuaded. Praise God. So let's look at Mark chapter 5. I told you, praise God, that we were going to look at the other, amen, gospels, amen, on the woman with the issue of blood. And I won't read all of it and out of each one probably, but a large portion because there's some things. This lady had a problem for 12 years. Every one of the Gospels mentions that, if I'm not mistaken. Amen. Long time. That's a long time to have a problem. Amen. Do you think she ever prayed before? Huh? I think she probably prayed. Praise God. She asked for help, and everything she seemed to embrace seemed to fall apart. In fact, Mark's gospel, uh, you know, brings out a little bit more on this lady and her dilemma. In Mark 5 and 25, it says, And a certain woman, <coughs> which had an issue of blood 12 years, 
and had suffered many things of many physicians. She's, do y'all ever go to the doctor and get sicker than whenever you went? <laughs> I like my doctor. I, I appreciate him. He's a good young fellow. Amen. And I'm not criticizing all doctors, but I'm, I've seen a lot of cases over the year. <laughs> you got to understand that they are practicing physicians. <laughs> they're practicing medicine. Praise God. That means you're the guinea pig and they're practicing. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm thankful for their help. Amen. They try to do what they can do. Praise God. But I know somebody that can fix us when nobody else can. Amen. Praise God. This woman had suffered many things of many physicians. Can you imagine the physicians back in her day, though? They were nothing like today. I don't believe. They, no telling what kind of concoctions that they came up with to try to get people well, you know. Some of them might have worked. I don't know. Praise God. I think a lot of those herbal things uh, deserve more credit than what people give them, you know. Uh, and while a lot of these uh, uh, things that they give you, uh, like uh, chemo and all that kind of stuff, it may end up making things worse for you than better. Praise God. But anyway, this woman had suffered many things of many physicians, and she spent all that she had. I mean, she, she, she was down and out. She, she uh, spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. <clears throat> Amen. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press uh, behind and touched his garment. Now, you know she was weak. You know that she was feeble. She was, uh, uh, you know, didn't have any strength. Amen. Praise God. So she, when she heard of Jesus, amen, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. Praise God. Amen. Now, I, I do want to mention here, and I, and I felt like that it's important for us as the church. Amen. Praise God. It is so very, very important for us that we tell people about Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Did you notice here, uh, it says, when she heard of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. She had to have somebody to tell her about Jesus. There's a lot of people in need today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But they need, you, say, you might say, well, they've been told about Jesus. There's churches all over the place. Well, you know what? It is true that our America knows a lot about Jesus. They, they, they may not know the truth about Jesus. Amen. A lot of people talk about Jesus. Amen. Praise God. There's Bibles nearly every place you go. But I do believe that we need to, especially when God has touched us, when God has done something wonderful for us. Amen. Anybody here ever been healed? You have been healed? Come on. I've been healed. I have been healed. You ever been had a headache and prayed? I know Jeremiah prayed for uh, the baby the other night. And, or, or, which one of them was it? Savannah. 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 It was Savannah. She was sick. And he, he told us about it. He testified about it. Praise God. He just said a simple prayer, laid his hand on her, said a simple prayer, and then it was gone. Amen. And just a little bit, it was gone. Amen. Praise God. You know what? It's no harder for the Lord to do that, to heal cancer or to, uh, you know, any kind of thing than it is to do that. Praise God. God can do it. Same God. It wasn't hard for him. He didn't have to go get reinforcements somewhere else or anything like that. Amen. He didn't have to go get reinforcements. Amen. I've been praying for Sister True Love that where she don't have to have that oxygen no more. Amen. I believe God can do that. I believe God can do that. Amen. Praise God. Just as easy as he touched Savannah when Jeremiah prayed. Just as it's nothing harder for him. How many of you received the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues? Come on, you received the Holy Ghost. You spoke in tongues when you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Was that supernatural? How huh? Was it supernatural? I didn't see no hands go up. What I got was supernatural. Praise. When you start speaking in tongues, that was a supernatural act. You cannot speak in another language on your own without learning it. Amen. Praise God. But when you prayed through the Holy Ghost, you got in the Holy Ghost and you started, the Spirit started giving utterance. Right? That is a miracle, my friend. Amen. That 
is impossible for it to be. Amen. That was God right there then doing a miracle. And every time that happens to you in prayer, that miracle is taking place again. And that's why we don't teach people to speak in tongues because that's not a miracle. But God is a miracle worker. And if you ever prayed through the Holy Ghost, you have witnessed a miracle. You have. And you know what you ought to do? You ought to pray and get in the Spirit. I told you that the other night, Wednesday night. You ought to pray and get in the Spirit and talk in tongues often. Because you know what? That's God building you up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I talked about that Wednesday night. But anyway, that is actually a miracle. You forget about that. Praise God. Amen. Come on. If you're praying through the Holy Ghost, that is a miracle. That's as big of a miracle as when Jesus dealt out the loaves and the fishes. It is. Both of them's miracles. Oh, praise God. Amen. And it's no harder for God to do that than it is to, you know, heal whatever disease that there is. Amen. We forget that that's a miracle. It is a miracle. Praise God. Amen. And the Lord is the same. Amen. Just like Jeremiah laid his hands on Savannah and she received healing, Jeremiah didn't do it. The Spirit of the Lord did that. Amen. Praise God. And you know what? If you, unless you doubt, unless you doubt, if you just have hope, that's one thing. Good to have hope. But if you can believe, Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's what Jesus said. We're talking about having conviction. Be something beyond hoping that it'll happen. I mean, having being in prayer, sometimes you might need to get with God in prayer for a little while. Get close to God before you can have that kind of faith. Sometimes you may need to fast a little bit, spend a little time pursuing God for a little bit before you actually have that kind of faith that you move beyond hope to the place you know that you've gotten in touch with God and God's going to take care of it. Come on, get to that place where faith is inside of you because faith moves God. I need some more examples because I've been telling y'all all of mine. <laughs> Praise God. But seriously, just for the sake of the topic, I received a phone call, two in one day. Amen. Of two terrible things that was going on in people's lives. People that are not here. There's nobody going to this church. But two terrible things was happening. <clears throat> and I was pastoring. And I got the reports. And one of them was a serious health issue. And the other one, I mean, needed immediate attention. And the other one was a family violence thing. You know, both of them, you know, the family violence thing was something along the lines that would cause death. You know? And I was, you know, I, it was late in the evening, and, and uh, my family went to bed, and, man, I, you know, I was concerned. I was pastoring these people. And these things come in, they're just tragic things. And so I, I got up and I started praying. And I prayed and I prayed and I was praying. I was walking the floor and I was praying, taking it to the Lord, you know, and uh, praise God. But somewhere in that prayer, during prayer, something happened. Something happened to me, inside of me. I, I was like I was released from that. I knew that I had gotten through. You know what happened? You know what? That faith that it took to see the hand of God uh, move, that faith took place inside of me and touched the Lord. Amen. That's what I believe took place. Because at that point, I was released from it, and I was just able to go home, just go to bed. I mean, just like, it's not troubling me no more. The tr it's left. It's like, 
assurance was inside of me that I had touched the throne of God, that I had assurance was inside of me. There was no more troubling. There, I didn't know what all was taking place. But the next morning I woke with a phone call from a lady in another town, an elderly lady, and I'll tell you who it was. It was Sister Mary Gilbert. And I, I, I never see her. I hadn't seen her in Every once in a while, I see her, when I take kids down to camp, I would see her now and again. I hadn't seen her. I knew her and stuff. And I, she was somebody I loved a lot and everything. But she never contacted me. never talked to her. But she called me on the phone. She said, Brother Ratliff, the Lord spoke to me this morning and told me to give you these scriptures. And it was scriptures that fear not, be of good courage, something like that. I can't remember the exact scriptures. There's two of them just like that. And just there was a witness. Amen. A witness. And that day... That day, both of those things were taken care of. Both of those things. Amen. Praise God. I didn't just hope that God would take care of them. Something happened to me. Sometimes you need to get it in the presence of God because, listen to me, you have, may have more hope than you have faith, and you need to get in contact with your maker and get in that place, amen, where he brings full assurance to your heart so you have the faith for the miracle to take place. Amen. Come on, Jesus said, this kind comes not out but by prayer and fasting. Amen. The reason they could not cast the devil out of that boy was because of their unbelief. They were followers of Jesus. They were disciples of Jesus. But Jesus told them, you got to pray and fast sometime. Why? Because you got to get in the spirit. you got to get in there. And you got to get that faith. Amen. Praise God, probably imparted from God to move some mountains. Oh, praise God. You see, faith is what moves God to do the miraculous. The faith, you can't fake it. It's got to be in there. It's got to be something that you're convicted about. Something that you know inside, that you know, that you know, that you know. God's got it in control. God's taking care of it. And a lot of people pray without that in their hearts. Come on, they got a lot of hope. But what you need to realize is if you don't have faith, it's either not the will of God, because I don't believe if you pray for something that's not the will of God, I don't believe God will let you attain that, that kind of faith. That's my opinion. I don't believe you can reach that. There'll be something uneasy inside of your spirit. There'll be something that you just can't seem to muster it up. If you pray for something against the will of God. But if you are asking God for something... And you don't have assurance. You need to pray, seek God, knock on. He said, knock, and it'll be open to you. Seek, and you'll find. Ask, it'll be given. Amen. Sometimes he may say no. <laughs> Praise God. But sometimes you're praying for things, and you have never gotten to that place where you're surely knowing that you're going to get it. You're hoping you'll get it. But you need to spend time with God until he either says no or it's yours. Until he says no or you have full confidence, you're fully persuaded that even though you don't see it, it's as well as mine. Amen. It may be a few days in the future, but it's mine. Come on. I don't know what day it's going to appear, but it's going to manifest because God has let me know that. Come on, you need faith in your heart. Faith moves God. Amen. How many for sure could say they would be like Abraham and have that kind of stuff inside of you for 25 years, not having seen it? What about Noah? I'm sitting in a flood of waters, Noah. I'm going to destroy everything with the breath of life. The Bible says he moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house. You know what? He was convinced. He did not stop. He moved with fear. There was some, he was persuaded that God was going to do what he told him he was going to do. He didn't sit around. Amen. He didn't, have, he didn't wait a few days and think, well, it ain't happened. 
No, he moved with fear. He was convinced on the inside. I heard from God. God told me this. I've never seen water a day in my life, only vapor. Amen. But I believe what was told me, and I'm going to do what God has commanded me to do. And you know what? He's going to bring it to pass. i got to get it ready. i got to get this boat ready. i got to see my family safe. He was convinced, folks. How many of you would build a boat like that? On dry land at that. One so big you couldn't move it to the water. <laughs> How many of you going to do that? How about when people are mocking you? And cause they mocked him. They did mock him. Peter said, that it was, there's, there's going to be mockers in the last time. And Jesus said, like it was in the days of Noah. So there was mockers. There was people making fun of him. How did he keep building in all this criticism, Moa? Noah? Moa. <laughs> Not Moa. <laughs> That's Moses and Noah together. <laughs> Moa. <laughs> Noah. How are you going to build with all that criticism going on? The people making fun of you, calling you a nut. Come on, the rest of the world's living like this. You, why are you living so strict for? He was a preacher of righteousness. How many people said, Look, you've been saying it, you, you telling us how to live, everything's fine with us. Come on, they're living it up. They're party animals. They were. Amen. And, but he was preaching, you better stop that. You better straighten it up. He may not say it in those exact words, but he was a man that preached righteousness. And you know what? I don't know how long it was that he built that ark, but a long time. A long time. And I believe that his convictions affected his family. This family knew because of the way he lived at home. They feared enough to help him because they knew he wasn't a fake. It's important for us to live it at home. I said it's important for us to live it at home because if we don't live it at home, our families won't have no confidence in us and what we say. Can you expect them to? You can't. You see, we've got to have faith. Faith is what took Noah through all of what he went through. Faith is what took all of these people through. Faith is what moved the woman with the issue of blood through the crowd, past obstacles. Amen. Yeah, she had a lot of reasons to doubt a lot of people. She had a lot of doctors that let her down. She spent all of her money... Amen. She got taken advantage of, I'm sure. She would have fallen into that category. People taking her for everything she, that they could, and she just got worse and worse and worse. But somebody told her about Jesus. Somebody witnessed to her. Somebody let her know that Jesus was doing miracles. Has he done a miracle for you? Again, have you talked in tongues? Have you been healed? Do you realize Jesus has done something for you? Amen. He is a miracle worker today, and he needs us to tell somebody. Tell somebody. Don't keep your mouth quiet. Tell somebody. You may not know all the scriptures, but you know what he did for you. So somebody told her, when she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, amen, came in the press behind, touched his garment. Amen. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith, it takes faith, folk. It takes faith. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, I don't remember what the ERV version is. What is that? ERV. I don't read all the versions. 
I usually stick with King James pretty much. I do a little digging. What's the ERB, Brother Damon? You're, I can't remember either. It's a revised version. What is it, Brother? English, revised version? Okay, it doesn't really matter, I, you know, but it said, this is what it says. So faith comes from hearing the good news, and people hear the good news when someone tells them about Christ. <laughs> Someone tells them about Christ. Faith comes by hearing the good news. And people hear the good news when somebody tells them about Christ. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And you can put this up and you won't never hear nothing. So he must be referencing people telling people. You, we have got to tell people. There's lots of hurting people. Tears my heart out. Tears my heart out. I read about so many different things that people are going through. I read news articles and stuff. I know, you know, not just the hurricanes and the, and the, and the shooting, that's bad, and all of those kind of things, and, uh, you know, going on. But I read, I, I like to read news on the computer, you know, I read the news articles and stuff, and I see all kinds of different things. I, I read about people. This really bothers me. I read about people wanting to end their lives. Because doctors can't do nothing else. And they're wanting the euthanasia stuff, you know. They're wanting to be able to be legally killed because they live in pain. They're living in hurting. That bothers me. That bothers me because I know that there's somebody that can heal. Somebody can touch them. Amen. Oh, God, anoint the church with the Holy Ghost and power. Anoint the church with faith and Holy Ghost and power. There's so many hurting people. There was a lady I read about here a couple of weeks ago. If y'all read news stuff, you probably seen it too. But she, she said, I'm on fire from the inside. She has some kind of disease. Angela may know what it is. But she has some kind of disease from the outside and just scorched her skin and everything. And, I, and you know, I just, oh, it just, you know, she's young too. Probably in her early 40s. Or 30s even maybe. It's just so many hurting people. So many people need Jesus. So many people need a touch from God. So many people. But somebody's got to tell them. Somebody's got to tell them. I know they've heard it. We need to pray, folks, and get into that place where God can use us, where we can be an asset to other people, help other people. Help other people find the Lord. Help other people find healing. Amen? Praise God. I want people to be healed. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So, somebody told her. Praise God. Amen. Verse number, Mark chapter 5, verse number 28. Praise God. The next verse is down, the same thing. For she said, everybody say, she said. She said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen. Praise God. Before she ever was healed, she said, she said, before she felt good, she was able to, by the faith that was inside of her, she was able to say, if I may but touch his garment, his clothes, I shall be healed. How many people can say that? When you come up to get prayed for, can you honestly say that? If you can't say that, hope is there, but faith may not be there. You should be able to say, Whenever I get prayed for, I'm going to be healed. She said, do you understand? What was inside of her was faith. Amen. She said, if I may but touch the, his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Before she felt healed, she said, I will be healed. The healing part, the feeling that came afterwards. I said the, the feeling that came afterwards. 
If we got to feel it before we're healed, we'll probably never be healed. Somehow we need to get in prayer with God until we know that when we come up and get prayed for, God's going to take care of it. I'm sure. Amen. I told you about me being prayed for before when I hurt my back. Amen. I believed what the scripture says. It is sick among you. Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over and them the law. In the name of the Lord, the prayer of faith, not the prayer of hope. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. If they've committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. I got prayed for. My pastor prayed for me. I believed it. I believed that scripture. Amen. And you know what? It happened. On the spot, instantaneously. Praise God. God's not a respecter of person. If we will believe, she was able to say, I, you know, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And she was healed. Amen. Praise God. Mark 5, 30. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched me? Praise God. Amen. Jesus felt virtue going out. He did not go to her and touch her. There were people he did that to. And if they had faith, they were healed. But this lady, Jesus was not approaching this lady. If anything, he was, she came from behind, if I remember right in the scripture. She came from behind. He was going away from her. Amen. He was passing through the crowd, and people were touching him all over, physically touching. Amen. But this woman, amen, she wasn't touched by him. She touched him. Amen. There's people that Jesus touched, and there's people that touched Jesus. Amen. This woman didn't touch him necessarily as much with her hands, though she touched his clothes, but she touched him, amen, with her faith. Amen. Oh, praise God. He wasn't coming her way. He wasn't coming her direction, but she was heading his direction. Amen. And she had what nobody else in that entire crowd had. Evidently, because she, amen, Peter said, Lord, the people's touching you all over. They're thronging you. And Jesus said, somebody touched me. Somebody said within themselves that if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. A lot of people were doing that literally, but she said it inside of her heart. She said it. It was in her spirit. She had what it took to get something from the Lord. Amen. He said, I just felt something go out of me. I just felt anointed virtue go out of me. I just felt healing go out of me. Amen. She actually touched him and drew that out of her, him by her faith. I wonder today, can that happen for you today? Can it happen for you and I today? Is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? Can you get in prayer? Can you get alone with God or in this crowd and touch God, reach out to him, have faith that he will do something for you? Not just hope, but believe. Amen. That what he has promised, he's able also to perform it. Who believes that? Who believes that? In the day and hour we live, who believes that? Is there anybody that believes his report? That's to whom the arm of the Lord is going to be revealed. Not with lip service, but with your heart. That God will change your situation. That God will change the circumstances. Amen. If you believe with all your heart, all things will be possible. Oh, praise God. Well, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So she took virtue out of Jesus. She pulled virtue out of Jesus. It can happen today. It can happen. It, you gotta, he wasn't paying attention to her. He wasn't. He was going away from her. Amen. And yet she, out of all the, I mean, she was compassed with weakness. She did had not have any, probably hardly any strength. She had been 12 years diseased with a blood issue. Amen. 
no doubt exceedingly weak and obstacles between her and Jesus. But her faith took her through it. Her faith pushed her on. Her faith that if I can but touch his garment, he's going to make a difference. He's going to change my situation. I know I've had everybody let me down, but he's not going to let me down. I'm going to reach for him. I've got very little strength, but I'm going to give it my best shot. And you know what? She did, and he did. Amen. And he'll do it today. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at Luke. <laughs> Let's look at Luke. We got Matthew and Mark out of the way. Let's look at Luke. Praise God. Luke 8, 43. And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, same one, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? <laughs> Let's look at the next part. Look at the, this, this, this. This is very, very interesting. Here it is, people thronging him. And he says, who touched me? What's the next part? When all denied. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I've heard people, listen, after getting prayed for, saying, it ain't going to be the same. It's going to be the same. It ain't nothing going to change. You know how they can say that? Because faith is not here. That's right. Faith is not here. I'm not criticizing. I'm just telling you. What comes out of your mouth is a testimony of what's in your heart. That's a testimony. I hope he does it. That's hope. Not criticizing. You know? Or to say, is, you know, I'm going to have this till I die. You get prayed for in Jesus' name. I'm going to have this till I die. That's what's in your heart. And that's not faith. That don't move God. Amen. They all denied. There were plenty of them around him touching him. Who touched me? Maybe there would have been other healings. Maybe there would have been somebody else healed if somebody was said, I got something. I got something. He touched me. I'm in his presence. But only one woman came forward and said, yes, he touched me. I'm guilty. I'm as char guilty as charged. I got a healing. Amen. I know he touched me on the inside. She confessed before all. She confessed before everybody. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord. But everybody else was in denial. <laughs> they were in denial, the whole bunch of them. The miracle worker was in the midst. And they couldn't say, he touched me. They couldn't say, I'm healed. In fact, they verbally denied it. Who touched me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if Jesus asked us that this morning, I want to say, yes, Lord, it was me. Yes, I touched you this morning. I touched you. I touched you. Amen. I touched you this morning, Lord. I didn't go to church and leave the same person as I came. I touched you. Jesus was looking for a testimony. Did you think he did not know who, he, who touched him? He knows everything. Amen. Who touched me? He wants a confession. Yeah. <sighs> Peter said, and they that were with him, Master, the multitude surround thee, and press thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? Jesus said, somebody hath touched me. Prophet, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, <laughs> she came trembling, falling down before him, and declared unto him before everybody, yeah. before all the people, I'm the one that got the healing. I'm the one that got the miracle. Because I was saying in my heart, if I can just touch him, I'll be whole. Amen. You know what? Jesus didn't let her down. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. Clap your hands to the Lord. He's looking for a testimony. 
<laughs> and she declared before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort, not your hope. Go spit your gum out, buddy. Don't bring it in here. Go. Praise God. She can, listen to me. She confessed before all, amen, that he had touched her, amen. Praise God. She was healed because of what was inside of her heart. She had faith inside of her, and that's what God is looking for this morning. He wants faith, amen. amen. He wants faith, amen. amen. Your faith will make you whole, amen. amen. That's what Jesus told this woman. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. Be whole of thy plague, amen. Go in peace, amen. Amen. Praise God. Faith is so important. Amen. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Praise God. Amen. I wondered this morning. Praise God. I wondered this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe I'm preaching what the Lord wanted me to preach this morning. Praise God. Amen. I, what's inside? What's inside? What's inside? What's inside of us? What's inside of our hearts? How many people have been healed before? How many have been healed? Huh? You've been healed before? I promise you that if you got healed, that's been in your heart at one time. If it's not there today, it's been inside of you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And if that is inside of you today, amen, anything, amen, that is in accordance with the will of God can happen for you today. I believe salvation is in accordance with the will of God. Don't you? Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Don't put off till tomorrow what needs to be done today. Amen. Amen. I believe healing is, uh, is available to us today. For by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If what can be inside of our heart is that confidence, amen, that assurance, amen, if that is inside of our hearts, amen, that confidence inside of our hearts, that God will do what he's told us he will do, amen. I can't put it in you. I'm preaching to you about it today. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Do you receive it? Do you receive it? Do you receive that when you was baptized in Jesus' name that your sins were remitted and they were washed away? Do you believe that? You know what? You had peace of mind after that. It came to you because you believed. Amen. When you was baptized in Jesus' name, all of your sins were washed away, never to be remembered against you anymore. You know how we know that? Because we're convinced that the Word of God is the truth. Amen. We've got convictions about it. We're not going to move away from it. Amen. We believe it because Jesus has it in His Word. Amen. That His blood would wash away our sins. Oh, if we can have the same convictions in whatever it is that we need from the Lord. If we got a problem, amen, we can cry out to the Lord. We can call upon his name. If we are convicted about it, that he is rich unto all that calls upon his name. If we can feel convicted about it, that he will do something great for us. If we will pray and believe, amen. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I may pray for a minute and not see nothing, but I'm going to pray on because I know he will bring it to pass if I'll diligently seek him. That's why many of those brush offers stayed to way past midnight because they was convinced that God would come through if they would just seek him. They prayed sometimes for hours. And you know what God did come through? And he'll come through today. He will come through today. If people will believe. I said he'll come through today. I'm not saying I got a mountain of spiritual faith. I'm not saying I got 
more than anybody else. If you're human, you got to struggle. I'm not here to criticize nobody. And I'm sure not here to criticize people having hope. Now about a faith, hope, and charity, these three. Faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these charities. So faith, hope is a good part. It's, we need it. Amen. But if you need something for God, if you can reach that, we'll call it that next level. That next level. Amen. It's, faith is surrounded by hope. It's surrounded by hope. Hope is right there on the borders of faith. Amen. Praise God. But faith is going to take you to the place to obtain what you need from God. Amen. It pleases God when we believe Him. When we believe in the face of what the doctors say. Not to criticize doctors. But you know what? When, there's, when the doctors give a negative report, there's still hope. There's still hope. And we can still have faith. Amen. Because their word is not the last word. Amen. God's word is the last word. Amen. When you're having trouble with family issues and stuff. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There's hope with him. If we'll listen to him, he'll put things back together. Amen. And he'll make things wonderful no matter where they're at. Praise God. He can do it. If we believe, all things are possible. Praise God. You want to come pray? You can come pray. Praise God. I'll leave between you and the Lord. Amen. God can do what he's done. Quit believing. 